Phoenix says he hopes you feel better. Thanks, Phoenix. All right, waiting on the tube to verify. All right, looks good. Sounds good. So we are good. And we are live and on the air. Welcome everyone to the Foolish Tech Show. It is Thursday afternoon and we are here mainly to provide you with support and answer any questions about our products and services. If you do have any of those, you can jump over to foolishtechshow.com and we have a couple ways you can join our IRC chat from there. You can speak with us directly and we'll talk back and give you some help and answers and demos or whatever's out there. Otherwise, we'll uh, be happy to talk with you just about general things that we bring up to fill the dead air. So, how is everyone doing today, besides from Proctor? Yeah. <laughs> Um, good, well, good, yeah. good. <laughs> so uh, I do have a quick announcement here. Uh, we have a new version of the Crypto Prevent beta out, and it is 7.8.4.15, and this fixes an issue where uh, Windows Defender was actually flagging it as a uh, possible malicious activity on the system and it was related to one of the SRPs that was being applied. Proctor, I thought you were going to mute unless you had some. Oh, sorry. I didn't realize my breathing was that loud. Um, it is. Well, no, it's just the <sighs> after drinking. <laughs> Darth Vader. Yeah. Um, Anyway, it fixes an issue with the SRP uh, being flagged. We corrected that. And it's funny because Windows Defender was flagging it, but it actually wasn't doing anything to that SRP that was being applied. It was just flagging it. So um, I do see one typo on my page here that I'm going to have to fix. But in the meantime, hopefully Michael's not talking to us because he's muted. Yep, not talking to us. Okay. Um, also fixed uh, some issues with the honeypot files on custom folders not being cleaned up and also added some additional logic to cleaning up honey file, honeypot files when it's disabled. And another typo there. Jeez, I did terrible on our uh, history revision list there. But um, last thing, I fixed the issue where the main interface may be closing when adding or removing uh, blacklist or whitelist entries. So. Those have all been fixed, and uh, I did add a known issue to our list. Um, there's a currently a possible issue with the auto updating when you first load Crypto Prevent and the main interface. So if it has any issue auto updating right now, the best option is to uh, make sure you have the latest installer. So go ahead and download it again; doesn't hurt, and then reinstall over top of itself. That should correct the issues and you'll be able to reapply uh, protections after that. Um, we are currently working on a fix for that and uh, hopefully we'll have that out some point soon. Probably not today or tomorrow though, so just to set some expectations for you there. Um, otherwise, let me get this thing fixed here and while I do that, I'll point out a link that uh, Johnny sent to me that, uh, cool, awesome, Phoenix. Uh, this link uh, I thought was pretty interesting. Johnny sent it to me that uh, Idiocracy is returning to theaters uh, just in time for the real life version that we're about to have come up here next year. Um, but it's uh, by Alamo Theaters and a couple other select theaters, I believe. They're going to be playing it. And if you have an Alamo Theater around you, I'm extremely upset because there is one in Denver that I went to. 
um those are actually pretty cool they usually serve beer and food and stuff and you know, like you sit down at a table to watch your movie it's a pretty nice environment there but uh yeah they're going to be playing uh idiocracy on october 4th so if you have an alamo theaters around you mark your calendars and you can watch it in all its big screen glory um apparently uh 20th Century Fox was contractually obligated to release uh, Mike Judge follow-ups uh, to the office space, but they pretty much just tucked it away and sat on it for every year, and then it opened in practically in just seven cities across the world and with zero publicity, basically. So um, they didn't even make a trailer for it. But now, a decade later, Idiocracy is pretty much a household name. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. It's a good show. Good movie. Very good movie. To refer to it all the time. Yeah, especially having to talk to Michael a lot. <laughs> um, so, uh, another thing I thought was pretty funny, and uh, we'll link this back to some of the links that uh, Phoenix posted at the beginning here. Um, oh, Phoenix, that's never going to work all the time, by the way, what you did for Chocolate and Crypto Prevent and Auto Hotkey. People are going to have issues with that, so just to make you aware of that. But anyway, um, I thought this was a pretty funny. Uh, Zach Galifianakis has a interview show segment on Funny or Die called Between Two Ferns with Zach Galifianakis and he essentially invites people to be interviewed and for some reason they continue to accept. I'm assuming their publicists have not like watched any of the shows before they're like, yeah, we'll come on that show. Um, but basically he takes the person he's interviewing and tries the entire time to make them as upset as possible and get a reaction out of them. Don't play that link because that is an auto-playing link just for anyone that may be broadcasting the show. Um, <laughs> but otherwise, uh, it was extremely funny. I, I thought it was very, very funny. Zach Galifianakis does a really good job. And uh, Clinton definitely uh, regretted uh, coming on the show. And for good reasons there, I believe. Um Relating to that, uh, there are a couple links here that uh, Phoenix posted relating to Clinton here, so we'll copy and paste them down again. So, uh, Congress told Reddit not to delete any of uh, the post of Clinton's email admin. And then the aide who set up Clinton's email is being held in contempt by uh, the House Committee. So there's that. Um, so uh, this one I'm not too sure about. I looked into it and I saw lots of conflicting reports, but supposedly the First Lady's passport and possibly some White House emails got leaked. But a lot of people were claiming that that was a fake passport and not real. It was just to try to get the hype up. So um, take it as you will. You can look into it if you'd like. Then uh, see what other links Phoenix has got here. We'll go ahead and get through those. Surface Pro 3 owners plagued by more battery problems. Um, that sucks for them. Uh, and a lot of people still like the Surface Pro 3 compared to the Surface Pro 4. Um, I honestly am fine with my Surface Pro 1, but just saying. Um, also, he has uh, another link that uh, Yak Yahoo confirms state-sponsored attackers stole personal data of at least 500 million users. And that relates back to another link that I was also going to talk about where it was Yahoo is preparing to confirm massive data breach affecting 200 million users, but apparently the preparing led to uh, 
just saying that it was a state sponsored attack and 500 million user data was affected. So interesting on that. Uh, we already talked about the Mamba uh, ransomware on a different show. Oh, it looks like TLS has a version 1.3 out. Copy and paste that one down. And yep, some of the latest updates to Windows 7, Microsoft is deleting the Windows 10 update nagware stuff. So good job for them. They're at least not continuing to nag you to update. Uh, apparently Photoshop is the most popular software on Pirate Bay, even though Adobe is trying to combat that. And I was going to talk about this one as well. Uh, iPhone 7 jailbreak has already been achieved within just 24 hours. And I believe it was done by a kid. So, A kid? No, wow. Yeah. Um, not too impressive there, Apple. <laughs> yeah. um, we had already talked about this one, but it is worth reposting again, just to kind of get the word out about this one, that... Uh, someone is dropping malware infected USBs in people's letter boxes in Australia. I want I was going to say where it was in Australia, but I wouldn't have gotten it right. So um, read the article and you can find out about it. But again, just public service announcement. Don't open up, don't plug in flash drives that you find on the ground or you're not expecting. Like, just don't do it, especially if they're not marked or labeled or even more especially if they look like this let me grab it here real quick they look like a usb rubber ducky or yeah <laughs> if it looks like one of these don't do it i can almost guarantee you it's going to be bad for whatever computer you plug it into so yeah don't do it if you have one that looks like that especially but it, just in general you shouldn't be plugging in flash drives you don't know anything about into a system that you care about, especially. So, yep, getting some info out there about that. And uh, there was also uh, new trailers or teasers even. Oh, that's awesome, Joe Chamberlain. <laughs> um, you might want to pick a different style to still at work. But uh, there's uh, some teasers released for the live-action Ghost in the Shell movie. So if you're excited about that, uh, they got some teasers. They're all, like, one-second clips. So I don't even know why they released it, why they released five or six different ones. They could have just released one that was five seconds, and it would actually have been better. But they, from what I can understand, they're not doing very well with that movie, and it's it's only going to get worse. So, um, This was a pretty interesting article about uh, the upcoming remake of uh, HBO's, HBO's upcoming remake of Westworld. And that is uh, coming out on October 2nd. And it has an original version, which uh, Nick actually informed me about from 1973. And this article is more about why this movie still matters. Like it still has effects on sci-fi movies and the entire sci-fi genre, even to this day. So it has lots of good points about that. And again, the HBO revision looks amazing from the previews that they've had, which we've posted on the show here previously. But wow, I, I can't wait to see what they do with it. Because I watched the 1973 Westworld, and it was excellent. A excellent movie. Even by today's standards, you would still enjoy it. It's a good movie. Um, they have a second a sequel, actually, called Future World, which is a fairly good follow-up. Um, not as concise, but it explores a little bit more things in the the second one where the first one didn't so um still an interesting movie but definitely if you have to pick between one or two watch westworld and then if you really like that then watch future world and you'll probably really like that as well so that is those 
Uh, Joe Chamberlain posted something for Proctor. What do we got here? Red Solo Cup by to Toby Keith. I know who that is, so I'm not even going to push play on that. Um, so, uh, did he? Future Stack Quark? I didn't know Michael Crichton died either. When did that happen? Was that this year? The year that's now going, that's going to forever be known as the year all our celebrities died? I thought I remember something about hearing Crichton died. Um, is that when I rewatched this, or I reread the Sphere? I can't. Oh, he died in two thousand eight. Yeah, it's it, it it wasn't recent, but it was uh, it wasn't forever ago either. Yep, apparently he did. Yeah, they they did some. I remember them running. I think some of his movies and things were more popular, like right around the time he died. Um, I remember seeing it going around. So. Sad. Um, he was a pretty good. He had some. He had some real good stories. I enjoyed him most of them. Yeah, he was. He was very good. Um, yeah, he's not. So uh, I thought this was an interesting uh, story, and this is one of those key stories where if you only read the title, you're not going to actually understand what the the article is talking about. But uh, in this situation, I was actually, I prefer having, if I hadn't read the story and just gone with what the, the title was. So um, apparently mooning is the new ghosting. And when I read that, and I would hope as everyone else did, that is if someone's texting you too much, just moon them. And... That, I think, is an excellent idea. Or, like, if you don't want someone to talk to you again or you're upset or aggravated by someone, just send them a moon picture. That would be freaking funny as crap. But apparently it's a new slang for just turning on do not disturb. I would so be careful, though. No one can careful. do that. If the person on the other end that's annoying you, you're not aware of their age. And you send them a picture, a moon picture, like you're talking about. It could be construed as some sort of sexual crime. And I am cautious to suggest that anyone send any picture like these at all anymore because of the, you know, issues that have happened. Yeah, that is very possible. So, and if someone like that is sending you pictures, then you would be in uh, trouble for even having receive those pictures but mm -hmm. anyway uh apparently it's just slang term for uh putting do not disturb on your phone which for apple it makes a little moon when you enable that so apparently instead of just ignoring text messages people are just completely ignoring everything about the phone and hey guys welcome to my world where i don't allow the phone to control my life i have it set on silence <laughs> and if I want to look or be bothered by it, I'll look or be bothered by it. I do not have the control, I uh, do not have the uh, phone controlling me. So, um, Sexual assault, really? Interesting. Well, I guess then don't do that. We'll just have to say don't do it. Stupid PC. Um, all right, well, let's see what other links and stuff we got out here then. There was some other good stuff. Oh, oh where is it? Do you uh, do the hacker and Obama or, or Michelle passport? Yep. Mm -hmm. That looks like or it's been reported that it's fake or not worth it. Or Is it? I didn't look at it. Yeah. It does look pretty shady, so. Um. This was awesome. Super, super awesome. Jeez, that's crazy, Joe. 
Um, I thought this was extremely awesome, and I know Beavis would like it if he's uh, watching now especially, but why wouldn't anybody like this? I don't know. Apparently, there's kits that let you build flying drones from just Legos. So you can set up a Lego drone. And what would be fun about that is you can crash it and then just rebuild it. That's awesome. Um, it does look pretty cool, and like you get a little Lego pilot and everything, and uh, it looks like it's called Flybricks. So uh, check that out if you like Legos. Definitely looks awesome. I thought. Uh, so apparently, uh, scientists believe uh, that horses can talk to us using uh, symbols. Uh, I did watch the last uh, episode of Mr. Robot, and it was okay. It was exactly the type of wrap-up from this crappy second season that I expected. So hopefully they get their act together and they do not do this in season three next year because, it, man, it's it's lost. It's very lost right now. So um, Anyway, there's the article links to other articles that have uh, – talk about the horses that can talk to us using symbols. So if you ever wanted to talk to a horse, you may be able to soon. Um, this is the only humidifier I would ever think about buying. So I think that's a, uh, a waste, but this one looks super cool. You can apparently make a homemade tornado humidifier. That looks awesome. Why why don't all humidifiers look like that? What like how's what's her name taught her to talk apes to talk with it what <laughs> future stack quirk are you reading something that a horse is trying to tell you through symbols <laughs> um so i didn't understand that uh while we wait on a response for that <laughs> Mr. Ed, thank you, Sheree. I guess, yeah, that sounds more appropriate, but I, it doesn't still sound like what Quark was trying to get across, but uh, Mr. Ed sounds more appropriate to the talking there. Talking to apes with ALS, okay. Yeah, it kind of can be like that. Uh, the same, I mean, I, even regular apes, I think, with sign language and stuff they learn through symbols and things of that nature, I imagine. Um, does anyone here like the McRib from McDonald's? No. Um, I, do. I vaguely remember trying it. It's got this nasty generic taste. You just you just know it's made from something you'd rather not know about. Uh, yeah, Is that what you're going to yeah. tell us? It does not look real, so I haven't tried it. Well, no, there's a there's a a thing here where you can uh, make your own uh, fancy and delicious McRib clones. So Ooh, this well, I, I, that's one. one of the few things I actually like at McDonald's, and I, I don't eat McDonald's anymore at all. But if I if I can help it, but um, if I happen to find myself at a McDonald's and I have no choice, and they have the McRib, I'm probably going to get that. Um, it's, it's just some weird, disgusting genera flavor that I enjoy about it. I, I find it delicious. Like if I made one at home, it would actually be delicious and therefore defeat the purpose of getting the McRib in the first place. This yeah. tastes way too good. Yeah. yeah. I can't eat this. That you're like, awesome. This tastes disgustingly delicious. <laughs> Um, or is that vice versa? It tastes 
deliciously disgusting. No, who cares? <laughs> I have not eaten any of them because I, I like Proctor, think they look too fake and will stay away from that. Like, I did well, see, that's why that's why I would eat them because they try to pass off their burgers as meat, you know, and I. Yeah, I don't need that. They're just uh, like, hey, we're not. They're they're not pretending. I guess they're they you can't. Well, they just. I I feel like they just pour a bunch of sauce on top of it to make you think that it's less of what it is. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't need. I don't need any fast food places burgers except I like the only the fast service. That's not actually fast at all. Yeah, I was gonna say Five Guys like. That's fast service, not fast food. Yeah. yeah. So those are the I, those are the that's where I would draw the line at getting. Well, Hardee's says good burgers. Arby's. Hardee's. Hardee's. That's See, I can't bring myself to eat at a Hardee's because to me it just like just the very thought of Hardee's makes me want to vomit. Hmm. Well, well the, <clears throat> ever since they got bought out by Big Star, I think it is, their the Hardee's food is really good. I know growing up, I, I couldn't eat there. Um, I would literally yeah, get sick terrible. every time I ate there. See, and vice versa for me. I, growing up, they used to have some of the best chicken in town when they started offering chicken. But nowadays, every time I've eaten at Hardee's, and it's been like that, well, we don't have anywhere else we can eat. Let's eat at Hardee's, I guess, or want to try something different and we can't, let's try Hardee's. And every time I've done it recently, it's just been their chicken is absolutely terrible. So maybe I should go for a burger there. I don't, I still don't like the idea of a fast food burger, honestly. Something about that makes me cringe. Um, I agree. Know, that... There was a Star Wars um, fan film thing. Yeah, is that the one that was trying to make you feel sympathetic for stormtroopers? It looks like it. It looks like it. I haven't watched it all, but that's, yeah, it appears that way. Yes, the Jakku, I think it's entitled Jakku, the first wave. Yeah, um, this has been touched on before, though, I, I feel, in the, uh, the movie, I believe. Um, kind no, of what it is now, Carl's Jr.? No, so, Carl's Jr. With. Carl's Jr. bought Hardee's, I believe. Carl's uh, Jr. was a West Coast thing. Hardee's was a worldwide thing. And then Hardee's lost the battle between McDonald's, Burger King, and Hardee's. So there Carl's was a battle? Ended up buying them out. See, I always thought Hardee's was like, well, it was just, well, it was always Roy Rogers on the West Coast. Something. I, seems like I remember watching something like on the History Channel about that. Hmm. And like somebody lost in a game of pool the title to the entire franchise. But, um, I think it's Carl's Jr. on the West Coast, but it's something like right. Hardy's is called Carl's Jr. on the West Coast. Hmm. And that's also a reference in uh, Idiocracy, just to circle that. Yeah, back. I do remember that. Yeah. Because uh, brought to you by Carl's Jr. Why do you keep saying that? Because they pay me every time I do. Being the smartest man in the world, I think you would know something about that. Brought to you by Jr. Brought to you by, yeah. So, um, and it wasn't until I moved out to Colorado and found a Carl's Jr. that I was like, hey, that's it. That's it. Why does that look like Hardee's? Oh, it is Hardee's. What the? This is crazy. I still didn't eat that. I only want to look up the history of um, dang it. You thought you had found something new in Prophecy. It was just I the did. hardest. I did. Unlike Jack in the Box, which was new and promising and turned out to be a complete and utter disappointment. Oh, no joke. I hate those. Those are terrible places. Um,. Michael is posting about cosmic radiation breaking Cisco routers. I mean, really? I, 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 is, is, it, is it come to this now? Have we just thrown our hands up and been like, okay. Cisco says router bug is a result of cosmic radiation? Yeah, that's, oh. a, that's the thing. I mean, if now they can just throw up cosmic radiation as an excuse, then pretty much these tech companies can do whatever the hell they want to. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, well, when you click that button, where exactly was Mars in alignment? <laughs> exactly. Because uh, if if they were on opposite sides of the Earth when you tried to click, it probably would have failed for you. Yeah. <laughs> so here, let's test this out. Wait for the conjunction of the planets in the next 700 years and call us back when the problem reproduces itself. Exactly. <laughs> Um, it seems maybe, and maybe that's the situation that happened is like, uh, somebody at Cisco was having a bad day and tired of dealing with this one customer that was relating something completely unrelatable. So they were like, you know what it, I, I just discovered in our testing last night that cosmic rays caused this issue to happen. So you're right. This issue does happen but it's cosmic rays and there's nothing we can do. I mean, you can't stop the cosmic rays. They were just trying to get someone off their back, I bet. Apparently it's not the first time that Cisco uh, blamed cosmic radiation <laughs> on a product <laughs> malfunction. Yeah, so if, if, if you have problems in bed, do you, do you use cosmic radiation as your excuse? Can, can What can cosmic radiation not be used as the excuse for? Um, Technically, they could cause a whole bunch of behavior in probably humans and in computers and in a lot of other things. I, I don't buy it. I need more specific proof that that's the case. And if that's happening, then they're failing to shield their products properly. And that's an all them issue. It's not the freaking. Uh, it, it, it's not the. Uh, it's not the. It's it's not the planets that are at fault. It's freaking Cisco for not doing something about it. This is the world we live in. These are the products. Cos selling products but I mean, like Earth. cosmic radiation is a very wide term. Like it doesn't relate to something specific that you can really shield from. Like. Well, I mean, anything that comes really from space wouldn't that be cosmic radiation? Well, they're talking about probably neutrinos, but I, I, that are created in the atmosphere because of the interaction of uh, the solar wind against the Earth, and those, um, yeah, they can theoretically. They don't now. Are they talking about stuff that has to deal with interacting with satellites and things like that? Because maybe then I could actually lean a little bit more towards. No. No, they're basically it's it's like you know if a bit in memory on your computer randomly changes okay that could be the result of cosmic radiation and so what Cisco is suggesting that a bit in their memory on the buffer in the router is 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 getting screwed because of uh, cosmic radiation or, or some series of bits or something like that and but you know to distinguish that to say um, that that absolutely is the case, it's next to impossible to do. But it should also be completely random as well. So Also, I think if that were the case, that there would be a lot more problems and more frequently. Well, I, there are ways that you could possibly minimize it with construction, but um, I, I, yeah, as long as they use this like once in an eternity as an excuse, it might be okay. But like, if, if what Parker said is true, and they've system, used it on occasions, I'm a little concerned. System requirements, underground nuclear bunker. <laughs> uh, sir, are, are you are you not using the uh, underground nuclear bunker? There's your problem right there. <laughs> Why don't you build that, put it in, get back to me. Talk more. Um, so uh, there's a, a remake of Jumanji coming out. Did y'all know this? Uh, yeah, I believe that I did actually. It's got The Rock in it and uh, Jack Black. I didn't know Jack Black. I heard something about The Rock. Yeah, The Rock's in it. Jack Black's in it, and. Uh, this article is talking about why Karen Gillian's character is dressed extremely nicely. Um, but I, I don't know who that is, and I don't know who the other person is, but I definitely know who The Rock and Jack Black are, so I think it'll be pretty interesting. Oh, that's Kevin Hart! I could barely make him out there. Does not look like him at all. But yeah, Kevin Hart. Uh, Jack Black and Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, and Karen Gillan, Gillian, Gillan, um, are going to be the stars of it. So, 
I don't know if it's going to replace uh, Robin Freedom Williams. Williams. I actually need to go back and watch. I never really liked that movie. I felt like I was too old when it came out to appreciate it. I thought it was a kid's movie. Um, and I. Oh, it was yeah, definitely uh, a good movie. Hmm. I might have to go back and rewatch it. It was definitely my favorite. One of my favorites. Really? It's, okay, because I. Movie, but I even but even now, like looking at that cast, I don't know how they are going to compare with replacing. Uh, Karen Gillian girl played on Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay. Mm. Okay. Um, Battle.net users. Uh, yep, Blizzard is dropping Battle.net. I saw something about that. Hmm. Um, they're also putting games on GOG and removing uh, DRM from their games, from what I was picking up or understanding. Blizzard? I believe so. Not positive. Uh, that's their whole business model. I mean, I, I can't... That's, that's, that was actually... It was it was in a, a, an IRC conversation of somewhere else, so it I, I don't have anything to link to or talk to about it other than they were saying that they were able to get it on GOG and they, that's actually the point of why they brought it up in the IRC chat was because they were like, it's always great to see companies bend to users' demands even after years of solid, solid completely disregarding them. Yeah, I get what you're trying to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, but... Um... I, um, yeah, I have some more. I have more questions than answers that, but I, I don't play those games. Who do, I do a lot of people. I mean, my friend. I've still got a friend who who goes back to WoW, and I'm sure you guys know people who still play WoW. Um, it's kind of crazy how. Yeah. I thought that whole error was kind of over, but apparently not. Nope, it is not. Uh, Phoenix also points out relating to the Cisco devices that. Uh, over 800,000 of their devices are affected by the NSA linked flaw. And we had talked about that flaw way previously. Uh, so yesterday we had talked about the Windows Signature Edition and uh, it blocking Linux installs as well as bloatware. Yeah, that's but, that's that was disturbing to me. I'm sorry. I just I didn't like Lenovo that. Lenovo is claiming that it is is Lenovo is denying claims that it pl plotted with Microsoft to block Linux installs. So, um, who knows? Back and forth, who it could be? Could be everyone. Um, they didn't intentionally block it, but it was just a byproduct of it. So, who knows? I uh, just wanted to throw that out there to get Lenovo's side out as well. So. Uh, Michael, do you use Disconnect? Do I use what? What was the tool? Disconnect. No. Uh, so either way, they're uh, Disconnect Privacy Pro eliminates tracking on iPhone and Samsung devices it is free for a week now. Oh, disconnect, not disconnect. Okay, I get, I get it. Um, no, I haven't used that. That's interesting. Is uh, I, there's so many of these services though popping up these days? These privacy services and things like that. I concerned that uh, uh, they're not all legitimate. And disconnect and is is in this article by Lifehacker, which I definitely will trust. Disconnect and, uh, the New York Times trust it too. has long been one of our favorite tools for protecting your privacy online. I want to say that they were not a free option, which is probably why you're not using it. It's because you mm. can't pay $5 for extra internet bandwidth and doubt you would pay $5 to protect your privacy. Let's see. Yeah. Up here. $50 per year for three devices. Yeah. Um, and it's free on iOS for a limited time, so that means they'll probably eventually uh, force you to pay. And uh, there, it is free for the basic protection, which would compare with like the privacy blockers that I'm using. So um, I, 
might be a good option. I just, if it were to nag, I'm sure I would not want to use it. But anyway. Uh, yes, Eric, uh, we talked about that on a previous show and we talked about it at the beginning of this show um, and pointed out that the ones that are shown there look incredibly like this, which is a USB rubber ducky, which definitely would not recommend plugging those into your uh, computer. Just to reiterate, there, you can't say that enough. So, yeah, definitely, definitely people don't plug in USB drives that you don't know what's on them. At least don't plug them into a connected device or anything that you care about. I'm going to see if that disconnect is on, if I can get it for free on my thing here. Early access, free. For Samsung browser, interesting. Uh, looks like they also have secure wireless, a new smarter VPN to stop wireless each dropping and disconnect search, search privately, stop search engines from tracking your searches. So there's those. Um, <laughs> random good random photo. Good morning, Windows 10. That's a good link instead, Eric. Uh, yeah, there we go. All right. Uh, so I thought uh, this was interesting. Uh, so uh, there was something called Just Mayo that was reportedly supposed to be a vegan mayonnaise, and apparently they weren't. They were just claiming that and then selling it as vegan. Uh, <laughs> style. So yeah, who checks that's those? funny to me? Yeah, I thought it was extremely funny. I'm surprised, although now thinking about it, I'm surprised this hasn't been done before, and I bet there's going to be a, a... Oh, I'm pretty sure it has been done before. So <laughs> that And see, that's what I always think is funny, that uh, when I meet vegetarians or vegans, and I'm like, oh, so you grow your own food? They're like, no. I'm like, oh, so you're not really, you don't really care. You go out and eat and do all that stuff. You don't, you don't really care, because... Be caring and uh, I don't know. You I have no those... idea if something <sighs> is organic or free range or any of that stuff. It's all if just they bad. want to try if they believe that's better for their health or if they believe that that's better for some, you know, interpersonal, you know, uh, thing, whatever. It's one. fine. Is it hurting? Is it hurting them? I don't believe so. Um, it, it, might it be completely some sort of snake oil, or might there not be any value to it? Possibly. Beavis. <laughs> wait, wait. Beavis is starting up an organic water bottling company. <laughs> Kudos. <laughs> Kudos, Beavis. Um, and Nick posted probably what is by far one of the best ultra spiritual life episodes. <laughs> Meat eaters acted like vegans. I actually had that hilarious. tab open before the conversation even spawned. It's hilarious. It's great. That that is one of the best ones. He's I'd say I was just wanting to. I was just watching it again, just for no reason. <laughs> um, another looks like going to be another successful product launch for um, for Samsung. There, if you haven't already talked about that, um, I didn't realize that they had uh, released their pricing and. Uh, you had talked pretty. about it before any of the pricing or anything came out. Oh, yeah, okay, and yeah, but this, uh, yeah. I'm, when I'm, you say I'm, another successful product launch, you're obviously not talking about the Note 7. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 I'm not. Um, but as as far as uh, SSD, I should have thrown in there, put in the word SSD, because they have had a very long running string of, of successful SSDs. Um, Apparently they, it's been so bad with the Note 7 that uh, regular S7 and S7 Edge users are looking to try to uh, return their phones for a replacement. Why? 
because they don't understand that they don't understand that it's the Samsung Galaxy S Note 7. Hmm. Whereas Samsung S7 Note, it's that specific phone model, not your Edge. Uh, your yeah. I mean, I have one and you have one, so I'm pretty sure that, uh, you know, people know that we know the difference. But, uh, yeah, you're right. I guess uh, consumers don't necessarily. Yeah. But, yeah, but I, I mean, they can't. They shouldn't be allowed to, right? I mean, there's – nobody should justify the returns of, of those things. They're, they're not, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Phoenix says, next in the news, SSD is blowing up. <laughs> um. YouTube gaming update smooths out chat experience and drops in a new Easter egg. That's fun. Um, oh gosh, what a waste. Uh, honestly, Phoenix, their phone is not that bad. Their, even their OS is not that bad on the S7. Uh, their hardware is fairly decent and the OS is still a little bit more customized than I like it to be. But I don't like, but it works. Yeah, it is fine. Um, and it, it's essentially the same stuff. It's just some things are a little Samsung esque that you have to deal with. But otherwise, it's it's really not that bad. Um, and Eric says after working their support not supported smart TVs and wrestling with tech support. For concrete answers, you can believe it. Now, yeah, there are other stuff I can't say for sure. Um, which uh, which Samsung did you have, Beavis? Because the all the way up until the S7, and even when I got the or Johnny got the S7 for me, as a she wanted the S7, and I got the free one that came with her getting one. I was like, I'm not very excited about this. I don't like this idea at all. And it's it's honestly not that bad of a phone with this generation. But previous generations have been terrible. I don't see how many how so many people liked the S4 and S5 and possibly even S6. I didn't hear too much back or forth about it. But it's it's like the previous generations were like the the Samsung Apple battle it's they were trying to make an iPhone out of uh Android so they were trying to give you an fully complete interface that was almost mimicked the ease of use of iPhones and you just can't do that on Android it's not designed to be locked down like that it's designed to be customizable and changeable and updatable and it's just terrible so um Y'all are crazy in the chat. We're, we're going to move on from that. So, uh, the, uh, have y'all ever had Bluebell ice cream? Some I've milk. heard of it. And I've, I've, Some I, good stuff. Yeah. Ice cream. Yeah. So Some I found out about in Colorado the first time. I believe they, uh, originated out of, uh, Taco or out of Texas, not Taco Bell. Um, but they came out of Texas and they kind of grew up and, uh, they moved around the west, so you can get them on along the west coast, but then they got a deal with Walmart, and they're across all Walmart stores now, I believe. Um, Bluebell ice cream, extremely delicious ice cream. Probably some of the best ice cream I've had. However, for oh. the second time uh, in as many years, they are recalling ice cream uh, because of possible listeria outbreak. Didn't you report this a year ago? That's what I said. For the second time in as many years, they're recalling their ice cream. I mean, but we on the show reported this. <laughs> I That's mean, I remember. What I'm saying. Remember. You are so savvy. Wow! 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 We we did talk about this on a show previously, which, by the way, I forgot to mention, like. Uh, Last Thursday or the Thursday prior to that uh, was actually our one-year anniversary of five days a week shows for Foolish Tech Show. So just thought I'd throw that. 
we're uh coming up quickly on 365 episodes in there i think we have just over 260 something right now so uh yeah so be careful if you're eating their ice cream i gotta say i think it may be worth it because it's it's that good that their ice cream is that good (laughs) i don't know the full effects of what listeria is or what it does michael our resident germ phobe no, I mean, it's it's i mean i i don't think it's terribly serious but it will make you sick and could hospitalize you and in some cases may kill those people that are already like elderly or or, or infirm otherwise um i i don't i don't think it's anything you need to be terribly worried about though um i'll, yeah. I'll try to look up some details if it, ever, if it ever happens to talenti brand then you can t- let me know otherwise i don't Hmm. Bluebell is extremely good. Oh, this stuff is extremely good, but I only get like the dark chocolate, and I only get like. Well, yeah, what I'm makes pretty, I'm pretty snooty about my ice cream. I don't what like makes them stuff. really so much better is they like they have real ingredients in their ice cream. So like if you mm-hmm. get the banana split, you actually get chunks of bananas in there. All right. And yeah other kinds of fruits and various things like that and like whoa 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 whoa. i take back what i said about it being not that bad (laughs) (laughs) i take back what i said about it being not that bad (laughs) change everything (laughs) um apparently it it kills 20 percent of the people that uh get it and um the major (laughs) issues are encephalitis and and um meningitis and obviously if you you guys are aware those are pretty serious um uh, diseases, um, and there were only ten um, variants of this until uh, it sounds serious. another five were for identified, and it was discovered in the 40s by uh, Lister in um, Britain. Um, Still going to go out there and say it may be worth it. <laughs> 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 Their ice cream. Really Did he? Good. Does this have any connection with Listerine? My no. Listerine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, Beavis mentioned in the chat that a lot of companies out west have had this uh, kind of outbreak. That even uh, Schwann's delivery food uh, got recalled because that. of that. So um, he said the real ingredients are actually where the listeria hides. So listeria hides. Russian roulette at the dessert. Yeah, just serve the ice cream with four other people since it kills one in five. <laughs> Um. Yeah. I, 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 but you know, but even, but they still sort of support that in the vast majority of cases, it just turns out to be relatively mild. Um. Um. In most people, but you know, I guess if you're one of those five, you're that one in the five. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Russian roulette ice cream. Russian, oh. That's a good point. <laughs> good one. So uh, we had talked, or I'd brought up uh, on a previous show about uh, Adidas uh, setting up a uh, factory that will make shoes with just robots alone. I think there's like the entire factory employs 12 people, but uh, they've showed off their first shoe coming from their uh, robotic factory. Um, kind of looks like it was designed by a robot as well, but not the point, I guess. Uh, so all of you on Verizon who have been waiting for unlimited data plans, well, I got something for you. Verizon says, suck it. They ain't never going to do data plans. You don't need it. (laughs) You thought I was going to say they're bringing unlimited back, didn't you? You did. I bet you did. (laughs) They're not. I didn't because I read it. Yeah. Very publicly hates unlimited data plans. I didn't because I'm pretty sure I've seen that before or just dreamt it. I don't know. Hmm. You probably did dream it. I don't but use all, I don't use more data than I have anyway. It's and that's why Verizon gives me more and they've lowered my um, per phone fee. Uh, I've heard app usage has taken a, a nosedive, um, you know, and while people still. Um, well, I mean, the video is watching as though offsetting that, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, 
but I will, I'm wondering if maybe the, one of the reasons people don't use a whole lot of data is because they're not embracing apps as much as they used to in the past or. Well, I feel like it's because they now know that they're constrained on that and they can't go over it. So they don't watch shows. They got scared with all those $9,000 phone bills, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they don't watch movies and TV shows and YouTubes all day on data. And yeah. that has brought it down. So that it looks like we don't need it, but really I could probably use 600 yeah. gigs on my phone. Yeah. The, the point is, do you, do you want them? Do you want them regular? I mean, again, I, it's it's as if somebody decides to 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 restrict how you use your car or how you use another uh, 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 device or you know if if your if your phone company could determine who you could call you know or whatever. It sort of seems to me like that with this data, and and I, I don't like that. I don't like lack of choice. That I think we should. Uh, I've already voiced my opinion, so forget about it. Uh. Beavis points out new No Man's Sky content has been confirmed. Oh, you got a video. The only thing I'd seen about it so far was a tweet saying Is that this new random content again? Because <laughs> uh, they can come up every week, right? And <laughs> all I saw was a tweet that they had responded to saying that uh, uh, that they're going to have a new music coming in. Mm. But... Um, did they ever address the, some of the uh, – From what – otherwise, from what I've seen, apparently they – the developers kind of just dropped off the face of the earth. Uh, oh. They haven't been talking or releasing anything or saying anything oh. since about August 19th or so. And this is the first one that came out that was – and it was just somebody that was saying – Hey, are you gonna have new music on a, an update? And the one of the guys replied back, "No, but new music is one of our first content uh, updates that's coming." So they are going to have content updates, and they have been saying that all along. But as far as I know, there hasn't been anything else that's come out about it. Hmm. And Evis, you might need to format because it works perfectly fine on my PC. Listen, I've I've heard enough reports of of it to suggest that it's not just in people's minds. Um, on that, I'm not saying you're 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 lying about your situation, Brantley, but I I don't know what it is. There's there's it's a thorn in people's sides. Um, yeah. Yeah, and Beavis, I usually do mute uh music on games as well, but uh that one is actually kind of nice and relaxing I, and that's what i play well, it's, maybe it's, i'm not playing it like other people it's playing. not a multiplayer game per se right it's largely a single player game right so um that being the case uh you know you're kind of probably be wandering around a whole lot and so music i would think would be more important to a game like that than it would be for uh one that you know you're constantly shooting or explosions or, or something yeah. i mean well that, I, like the the music that's there i am fine with but at the same time i can understand like uh playing other music while you're doing that stuff would be fine as well but mm -hmm. it, i i don't have any issue with the music i i would like to see new content and new features come up because that would be nice and interesting but um all right well we're about to hit our hour time limit so i got one last thing to throw out there just for a, a last fun link uh apparently uh, i believe this is a sony uh setup but they went out and uh for their brava tv lines uh glitter bombed an entire uh abandoned casino and it does look pretty cool but it's to show off their 4k content so if you have a 4k tv and want to see how nice it looks you can play that video and be amazed with your 4K content. And it does look pretty good, so I'll just throw that out there too. But all right, uh, we are at our hour time limits. So let's go ahead and wrap up for today, unless anybody else here has anything real quick they want to add. No. Um, cool. It's good. All right, well, let's wrap up for today. Uh, thanks, everyone, as always, for joining us in the chat and helping direct our conversation and adding links and everything there. We are Thank you, much appreciated to all of you. And Joe and Phoenix and DG Murdoch and Cybercrypt and Beavis and E. Taylor when you were in. 
Um, thanks again for joining us. And all you listeners out there who go unnamed every week, we'd love to mention you. So shoot, shoot us a line sometimes and we will. <laughs> and jump into our chat. But otherwise, uh, we are here mainly to provide support and answer any questions about our uh, products and services. So if you have any of those, feel free to jump into our chat tomorrow at 6 p.m. when we're on for our Friday show. And we will see you and talk to you then. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Proctor, take us out, number one.